Let's talk about little Polly. Who's that? <laughs> well, you ought to know, sweetie. Have you heard the good news? He is risen. Little Polly is the nephew of Polly Gualtieri, Polly Walnuts, as far as we know anyway. The reason I say as far as we know is because one, we know that the words uncle, cousin, nephew, etc., are used pretty loosely on the show. And second, and perhaps most importantly, Polly Gualtieri's lack of knowledge about his family history means lots of unknowns with his nephew, little Polly's history. Polly, remember? Jamani. Oh, little Polly. Hey, 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 Is Britt treating you okay? No complaints. No complaints. And I think that defines him pretty well for most of his time on the show, especially in comparison to some other guys like Benny. Fucking something in this situation, huh? Right. Everybody with eyes in the back of their head. Can't even get down to the pork store. Gotta hang around here all day doing nothing. But to see my ma. Uh, I don't think anybody, Polly. Little Polly. Sometimes honesty is not the best policy. Whoa. Chrissy said team made a killing in real estate down Fiedenheisen. Tony, it's come to our attention you bought property around Freelinghuisen Avenue. Come to your attention from where? <laughs> Ralph told this funny joke. He goes, <laughs> Jimmy Sack had a 95 pound mole. Listen, John, I just want to say, uh, I hope your feelings weren't hurt too bad and that it never got back to the missus. I want you to sanction him, Ralph Safran. Yeah, somebody should do something about it. I appreciate your thoughts. We can't see who the Maggio. You think it's funny? That's in bad taste, Tom. Huh? That's not what I heard. But as it relates to his uncle, doing his uncle's dirty work ends up hurting him later on, as we see. He's been working the program very dedicated ever since he threw little Polly out that window. Let's not go there. Little Polly could be many things. Sometimes he was the messenger. You look good. Better than last time. Ralph came through with those jobs. Bear Patrol. An officer who got hurt in the line of duty. A construction worker. You got caution there? Hey, you know that girl the other night, Danielle? It's a piece of ass, but fucking rude. I think he's Jude Law. Apparently, he never had the makings of a varsity movie star. According to Adriana, he's a jeweler, too. <laughs> I got e-bell watches, too. Earrings, whatever you need. Ball breaker. Uncle's looking for at least 10. I'm talking here. We're just breaking balls. JT, by the way. This is fucking Pulp Fiction. Am I supposed to be afraid? I don't know. I didn't see it. God. A comedian. I heard the hooker he was with got it in the chest. Must have been silicone everywhere, too. <laughs> Why you always try and top me? You took the air right out of my whole punchline, asshole. Polly broke Eugene Pontecorvo's balls on a day that Eugene woke up on the wrong side of the bed, to put it mildly. Well, you ought to know, sweetie. Oh. <laughs> What'd you say? Whoa, whoa, Al, whoa, whoa. Another DeMeo family member who gets really pissed off at little Polly is Christopher. When little Polly tries to steal drills, from Al's shop, Al being Christopher's father-in-law, the father of Kelly Moltisanti. My uncle didn't call you? It's this issue with stealing the drills that leads to Christopher's frustration and anger throughout Walk Like a Man, which culminates with his trip to JT's at the end. You know, and I know, they would have a boost that. Go on a live radio, whatever the fuck it is you're drinking these days. Listen, we're here with Mike. We're gonna take the drills. <laughs> you know what? Whatever he said. <laughs> when it was little Polly and Christopher at JT's, JT says, You know me. What could you possibly do to me that I haven't already been through? What else could you possibly do to me that hasn't already been done? Well, Fine. take care of you. Don't worry. Yes. Uh, fine by me, but if I were you, I wouldn't make a problem where there ain't one. If I were you, I wouldn't go make a problem where there ain't one. There are times that we see Polly mess around, 
It's in response to the Lupertazzi family. Or if, say, Mr. Alan Sapinsley refuses to give Tony back his deposit for the house that he was going to buy, the white caps. So this year with the drills is an example of little Polly really not being a good friend to Christopher. Though, what's the most important thing to them in that world? So I guess we shouldn't be too surprised. What's your name? Uh, me? Uh, uh, Mike. You are my friend! You are my friend! Though to be fair to little Polly, he was likely just working at the direction and on the orders of Polly Walnuts, but at the same time, it's little Polly who gets caught in person by Al, and it's little Polly who's supposed to be Christopher's friend, whatever that's worth. But we're short-handed. Now, what about after Made in America? And we do business with whatever's left. We take them out, absorb the whole fucking thing. Little Polly is alive. So what would he do next? Would he start working with the Lupertazzi family? I imagine that if Polly Walnuts decided to work with New York, little Polly would follow suit. 24 hours, so there's no chance for them to hit back. Polly got the area? No, management. Considering how New York was very much against taking out Polly Walnuts, I imagine they'd be willing to work with little Polly as well. None of my customers giving their action to New York. Know how Detective Vin McKazian said that he thought Polly was a psycho? With little Polly? I'd say not so much. He and Polly are different that way. Whereas Polly doesn't really seem to have a problem with violence as long as it gets him what he needs. I think little Polly's a bit more bashful and perhaps caring when it comes to that sort of thing. Some people got hurt. Pretty bad, Polly. Lady broke her wrist. Some Puerto Rican kid lost some, some teeth. So if we look at a pair of uncles and nephews here in the DeMeo family, would Christopher be in little Polly's position or a similar position if his uncle, asterisk on uncle, wasn't Tony. Now, if Tony's still alive after Made in America, what does little Polly do? I suppose my overall point I'm trying to make here in this video is that while little Polly was a minor character, he didn't really have an arc, but his character did impact other characters who were looking for an arc or guys that were much bigger players in New York and New Jersey. So, what do you think of little Polly Germani? Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'd love to hear from you.